All right, what's up guys? Uh, today I am going to be filming, I'll call it like a splicing vlog. I'm not gonna call it a splicing how-to because that is not the intent of this video, just, I don't know. Don't wanna be liable, you know? So uh, I'm not a splicing professional, I just know how to do it. So uh, today I'm gonna be splicing some New England uh, whatever this is called, uh, braided safety blue. This is like the high V or whatever. I don't know, I couldn't find Teufelberger's instructions for splicing this or New England's instructions. So I'm just gonna be using the Samson instructions cause it's basically the same thing, just a 16 strand rope, but this has the awesome uh, blue core so that it's super visible if you uh, cut your sheath so you can see where the rope has been compromised. But, this is kind of a, <laughs> this has been a well-used rope. I'm splicing this for a co-worker, and this this rope never had a splice on it, so he was just working off a, a anchor hitch on it. So I'm going to try to put a splice in it. Hopefully it works, because, uh, yeah, this is the best end. So this is the better end, and this end is still filthy, but not as fuzzy as the other end. The other end's like a pipe cleaner. So yeah. Let's get to, I think I'm going to wash it first, hopefully loosen up some of the strands to make the uh, pull through easier. But yeah, let's get to it. I'm just going to probably just wash this with water in the sink. I don't have any fancy rope detergent. So, got the rope washed, and now I'm gonna measure and mark it and get started. So, let's get my notes out. Oh, look at how pretty and bright that is. <laughs> oh, this rope is dirty. Just because I'm going to zero out the core in here. Let's see, does it kind of match up? Not really, but whatever. Oh, look, there's our, there's our uh, marking thread. They pulled through, thankfully. I think it's stuck in there. All right, let's start our taper. So now we gotta mark our 10 pairs to remove. Uh, sometimes these pairs are a little bit harder to pull out. So something I'm going to try. Well, also I can't really mark them, so I'm gonna have to mark them by just picking them immediately with the awl. But we're going for five pairs, so we're taking out 10 strands in total. Ten, sixteen. so technically there's only six left in the end. 
because this needs to be a pretty aggressive taper to actually fit back into where the core was. There we got our five marked. I'll do the left ones as I pull them. So yeah. Oh yeah, I remember how hard these were to pull now. One down, ten to go. This rope is super fluffy and I don't remember having this experience with Arbor Master but it's super hard to pull it was nice to be able to pull only a couple strands of the one strand to mark it but now when I'm trying to pick it all up at once it's pretty splintered apart I don't know if that's from use or if that's just how these safety blue ropes are but man Look at that taper. There we go. That'll stretch out a bit. So we got all 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 of our strands tapered. Oh yeah. There we go. Now, I think it's time to bury that. All right. It is time for the hardest part. Oh, I forget that the fit's not long enough. So I'm gonna have to do this in two parts. Oh. There we go. First part of the worst part done. So what I think I'm going to do differently is uh, instead of it burying, instead of burying it past the crossover, into the crossover before I, because uh, my fid wasn't long enough, so I did it just before where the crossover begins. So I think I'm going to bury the eye all the way up before I send this piece through the crossover. And when I do this part, I use a, uh, I just put a little clove hitch on this fella and then toss it on a carabiner. It doesn't really disfigure it a lot, so it doesn't mess up your berry, I don't think. At least it has not in the past. I'm going to get a saddle on to close up the eye. John had this sweet carabiner on his gear bag. This is an original, uh, like, this is a black diamond carabiner, an old one, and it still has the Chouinard logo on it. Here, wait, I'm going to zoom in on that real quick. Let's see how close I can get. Yeah, look at how sweet that is. It has a really weird locking thing, so you can't lift it too high or too low. You gotta get it just right to open it. This thing is sweet.
Oh, damn. I think I got this nice and tight. Where's another one of those carabiners? I think I went past my mark, which is fine, but let's see if it fits a carabiner well. Oh, yeah. That's got to be it. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. And then I'll milk from this side once I get this end buried. Alright, we don't need all of this, so I'm going to cut some of it off. That's what that was. <laughs> Oh yeah, baby. Crossover done. Now it's just time to taper. So first I gotta zero these out. So now I'm just getting this set back tight to the way it's gonna be so that I know where to cut the core and the sheath, which is now in the core to taper properly so that this crossover point is nice and smooth. But first I gotta make sure I get all the slack out of the sheath so this works properly. Also, since I'm done with this, I can cut off my thread cover or thread marker. There we go. I don't know, usually this is really hard. I think my knowledge of some new techniques like yeah like putting a carabiner in the eye and bouncing on it to pull it through also when you're pulling the taper through to pull on the core and the cover to get this part through definitely makes it a lot easier but I think the rope being wet also helped a little bit uh, yeah so obviously I can't mark the core with this because it's a blue marker. Yeah, do you have a black one? Yeah. So I got exit point marked on this one and exit point marked on this. Yeah, that's discolored enough. That should work. So now we need to pull this out enough to mark six and a half inches. zeroes out right. That would suck if it didn't. Alright, time to make this stuff disappear. Please go away all of you. Oh, thank God. Those ones all went away. That's one for the other one. 
needs to go away. light and we'll just call that good maybe I'll go on a quick climb on this this weekend just to set it properly but yeah got a little bit of a thick crossover point but for the most part I think it's good I think if you wanted to make that crossover a little bit better you would taper the um, core strands a little bit more heavily than they instructed to. In the Samson instructions, I should have checked to see how many core strands a Samson rope has. I think it's either eight or something, but this one has nine. Maybe this one had a little bit more core strands than like Arbor Master does, but sick. Now just gotta lock stitch it, and this is ready to go. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This turned out really well. Definitely less afraid of splicing 16 strand in the future. Sweet. Oh, so sick. So I just got these Osborne sail making needles for uh, lock stitching and whipping a splice. The thing is, they are the, these are 13 gauge. I think they have a little bit smaller 14 gauge, which maybe I'll try too but they're just a little big to use for 24 strand rope. I couldn't get them through the one core mark point where I whip them uh, easily with these. So, I mean, it's not easy no matter what I use, but just a straight needle like I've been using works a little bit better with those, but I'm gonna see if this sail making needle works all right with these ones. So I like whipping with uh, two pieces of whipping twine, two different colors, just cause you know, it's kind of fun, kind of fancy. But I used to whip, um, whose instructions tell you to do that? Maybe it's Yale where you do the diagonal crossovers after the whipping. So that's how I like to do it. I've tried doing the straight crossovers like Teufelberger, but I can't make it look as good. I'm just not great at getting it symmetrical. And I don't, I don't like how it looks. I like the, I like kind of the triangle pattern of making them cross over. But I do like the way Teufelberger does their whipping because it's not like a normal whip where you have the kind of loop and then go around over the loop and then pull the loop tight to get the piece of slack underneath. I just like the way Teufelberger does it where you just stab it through the rope and then whip over it and then just keep going without having to do that fiddly little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. But yeah, this is how I like to do it. Kind of a medley of a couple different methods. I don't have a sail maker's palm, so I just like using this uh, huge wood coaster, recycled coaster thingy. And if you insert it at an angle, then you can whip back over the little tail piece you leave out. So it kind of cleans it up a little bit. Oh yeah. With the 16 strand, the sail maker needle works a lot, a lot better. All right, so see I'm kind of at an angle. So as I whip upward, I'll hopefully be able to cover up this knot. Just, I'll try to bury it a little bit. I don't like, I don't know, it makes me a little bit squeamish the way Teufelberger, like in that video, he uh, kind of melts the ends down. I don't know, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable kind of melting that close to your rope. So I do not do that. I just cut it and cover it. Ah. 
Hi. <laughs> now I'm just burying the end of the whip. Uh, on the Teufelberger splice, after the last one, they just cut it off and burn it. But I like to do the Samson way, where you go, or maybe it's Yale, I don't know. You go up diagonally through the rope, just trying to stay just under the surface so that you can't see the whipping twine as it travels up from the whip. But the nice thing about this is as you go up, you have a lot of available slack in here. So when you get to the last one, you pull it tight and then cut it. And then when you pull it, you just bury the end of it. So there's all this nice locked in twine to keep this split or this whip all nice. But yeah, it also hides pretty well. And you're actually locking up this part uh, pretty good too. Just remember to really milk this part out really good to make sure that the sheath isn't loose or anything on the core, which is technically the sheath too, but whatever. Yeah, there's almost the finished product there, baby. I did not try to make the whipping twine match. That's just the whipping twine I like to use, gold and white. Alright, that's enough passes. And it's not a lock stitch, so I'm fine with going in one direction and not going perpendicular to that. Or this is the termination, not the lock stitch, so I'm cool with only going in one direction. It's probably fine. Beautiful. Oh, that looks nice for how dirty this rope is. <laughs> so, milk this tight and then pull out some of the twine. Snip it, and then boom, that twine's gone and hidden, just buried up there with the core. Nice, clean, finished product. Well, not clean, it's pretty dirty rope, but whatever. Ooh, a real tight eye. No need for an orientation grommet on that. So that was splicing uh, Teufelberger or New England ropes, whatever, safety blue. Um, was definitely a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I was horrified that there was going to be sap or something in this rope that would make it really hard to splice, but it went well. It's pretty, pretty easy. I think washing the rope, having it wet when you're splicing it definitely helps a lot. And yeah, use 16 strand is really hard to splice, but this was not very terrible. So yeah. This was sweet. Uh, definitely got some more fun videos coming up. I'm really excited. I got some uh, some Samson uh, hyper climb coming, which I'm very excited to see how that performs. I'm hoping it's a pretty tight jacketed 24 strand rope because I don't like how my 24 strand ropes get grabbed by chainsaws and stuff like when they're just hanging at my waist. So excited to try out that hyper climb. We'll be making a splicing video on that. And I'm super excited to get some uh, Teufelberger Drina line that I'm going to splice up because it is the only Kern Mantle rope I know of that has manufacturer splicing specifications. So hopefully that'll go well. I'll learn from that and I'll be able to... I've seen people splice Sterling HTP, which at the moment is my favorite kind of rope. And... I'm hoping maybe I can use some of those Teufelberger tools to splice some sterling and then send my sterling splices to get tested and see if they're strong enough and robust enough, durable enough to be used on my work lines because sterling HTP, very nice. It does not get caught in chainsaw teeth. And yeah, current mantle ropes in general, very durable ropes in my experience. Don't get very fluffy. And yes. Very good. So I was just out here uh, climbing on this rope I just spliced a little bit, you know, get some skin in the game. I always climb on your splices a little bit when you're first starting, <laughs> just to make sure they work, which it does. I wasn't, I wasn't worried about that at all. But so, <laughs> something I did incorrectly with this splice, which isn't a danger at all. It's just not as pretty of a splice now. Is when I did the crossover, the crossover is supposed to be about 11 inches long. I read the instructions just a little too quickly and forgot that 
because it's 11 inches long, where the core comes out and where the sheath that's in the core comes out, you're supposed to pull, you're supposed to zero it out so they're as far as they're going to be in there once you milk out the splice. And you're supposed to pull them out 11 inches so you have the entire crossover visible and then cut it so that there's only six and a half inches sticking out. What I did instead was I just pulled them out six and a half inches and then tapered the six and a half inches. So now what my taper looks like in the core is instead of instead of them meeting up like say these are the two tapered ends instead of them meeting up like this and being nice and uniform diameter throughout the rope instead I overlapped them kind of like this or even like this so the rope just has I don't know if you can see it so here's like a normal spot in the rope it's still nice and thin but where my crossover is right here is big 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 thick chalky boy <laughs> but like not like ridiculously thick like down down here by the eye of this place but it's it's noticeably thicker here but it shouldn't change the structural integrity of this place in any dangerous way but yeah oh well I'll just have to remember that next time I do it I was just working a little too quick at the end there but yeah it works pretty well here I'll show you another cool fun trick that I learned rock climbing and I didn't have any of my climbing stuff, so all this was just the hardware John gave me, and then I just had one climbing carabiner set aside. So I wanted a little lanyard because I didn't feel like getting a throw line out of the car, so I just kept spider climbing up the tree. I threw my rope in just by hand and then just kept climbing up. So here's how I made my lanyard. So this is the other end of the rope. You can see in much rougher shape than that end of the rope. So the way I would make an adjustable sling when I was uh, top laying rock climbing is I would have another carabiner, but I can use the side Ds on the tree motion. And I would just do a clove hitch through the carabiner. So now I have this clove hitch, which isn't a super adjustable knot. However, if you take a carabiner or tire ring in there and clip it right here on the crossover of the clove, you, it takes two hands to operate this adjustment, so it's not perfect by any means, but pretty sweet. You just pull out like this on the crossover with the carabiner, and then just tighten her up. So if you can come in for a close-up on this one, you can see that part where the clove hitch crosses over, you clip right there so that you can pull out and then pull out slack with the other hand. Or if you're trying to tighten it up, you know, just pull from the other end. But yeah, that's how I made my quick adjustable semi-adjustable lanyard when I was climbing this little maple right here in my parents front yard little splicing video vlog. I uh, can't wait to do more with uh, the Samson Hyperclimb and uh, Teufelberg Adrenal Line. So I'm excited for those videos and I hope you are too. It should be pretty fun and then experimenting with some HTP. But uh, yeah, good times. I'll uh, see you in the next video.